I'm going to play a, a set of variations on an old Scots tune called My Nannio. The variations are by William Forbes of Dis Blair, and he lived from 1661 or 1662 maybe to 1740, so very much 18th century, early 18th century. There are five variations on the old tune, and they're nice, they're very attractive. Uh, he does an interesting thing at the end, which he also did in other variation sets that he wrote, uh, having um, written the, the, the first uh, part, the, the larger part, in 4-4 four, four time, common time, he changes into 6-8 time, jig time, for the very last fifth variation, providing a little rhythmic variety. Now, who was William Forbes of Displayer? Well, he was quite an important person, it turns out. And the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, has pro of all places, has provided me with this information from the wonder of the internet. Displayer, by the way, is near Newmacher in Aberdeenshire in Scotland. William Forbes of Displayer is a name well known to students of Scottish vernacular music during the first half of the 18th century. The name Displayer is not infrequently found in important manuscript collections of the period, and his arrangements of classic Scots airs like John Anderson, My Joe, My Dearie and Thou Die, and Willie Was a Wanton Wag have remained in circulation and in print down to the present day. From the family circle of William Forbes, also came one of the most powerful strands of oral tradition to be recorded during the period. His daughters Lillian, uh, Lily, sorry, and Anne, the ladies of Displayer, were the chief informants of his granddaughter, Anna Gordon, Mrs Brown of Falkland, easily preeminent amongst the named ballad sources of 18th century Britain. He was also a poet, by the way. He did that too. Now, I'm going to play these uh, variations twice, as I said, on two different violins, and they both have a local connection with, the, the, um, with Aberdeenshire, or that area of Scotland from which the tune comes. This is actually a French violin, probably made in the French violin-making town of Mircourt. It's a very, very nice example. And it was retailed, and this is where the connection comes in, it was retailed by Thomas Craig of Aberdeen, who was a man who, who did this. He bought in uh, continental violins from good workshops, quality instruments. Uh, he bought them in the white, that is unvarnished, and he varnished them, and then he sold them. And he was, he was very successful and produced uh, nice instruments for, for lots of people. So that's that one. That's the back, by the way. It's very nice. And the other one is very much um, a Scottish violin, and it's recent. Uh, or I should, should have said, I don't think I did say, the French violin was, uh, was first sold in 1905, so it's fairly old. This is not old. This was made, I don't have a date for it, but I think definitely in the last 20 years, by Sandy Robertson of Garmouth. Garmouth is in um, Murrayshire, which is west and slightly north of Aberdeenshire. And this violin, when I first saw it, I got it about two years ago, a bit disappointed because it has rather nasty streaky varnish, but... Once you look at it, you discover that it's very well made in every respect. It's a nice violin. And the two instruments complement each other in the sense that they have different sounds. The French violin, which is slightly larger, is fairly bright and sonorous. The Scottish violin is a little bit more mellow and um, very nice for playing tunes. <laughs> or anything, really. So here we are, by William Forbes of Displayer, uh, Five variations on the old tune, My Nanny Old. 